Hey everyone, this is Jack G and these are my hobbies. I have a special edition today. As a matter of fact, it is a special limited edition. It was donated by Peter. He's been supporting the channel and this is the Cricut Tuna limited edition. I think you can see that hopefully right here. 63 of only 250 knives like this were ever made. And I'm gonna talk about it a little bit, but first I wanted to let you know that if I can get to a thousand YouTube subscribers by Christmas, I am going to auction this off and this could be your Christmas present. And what a cool Christmas present a limited edition knife would make. I'll do some comparisons as I usually do. And just to let you know, I have a few more knives coming in that it'll be pretty exciting to take a look at. This is a 31 small. Uh, which I really am excited about. Also the Spyderco uh, PM3. I just couldn't live without my Spyderco that I just sold. Uh, it's the lightweight version with the new uh, Spy 27 steel, which uh, I'll talk about when I get there. And then a couple other special surprises that I'm really excited about as well uh, by the end of the year that I hope to come in. Um, okay, so let's talk about this knife. Let's first start with, uh, if you want to support the channel, that would be great. I would really, really could use the help. And again, special thanks to Peter. He bought this knife, sent it directly to me and said, hey, keep it if you want or donate it to your channel. Uh, just do a review on it and uh, I want to hear what you think, which is super cool. I mean, what a cool guy. What a great knife community. And in fact, I hope you're all doing very well. So let's talk about uh, the box that it comes in, which I really like. I mean, sure, it's a special edition and you would kind of expect it. So this is the Cricut. Um, it is, has a little magnetic, you know, thing there. Uh, a little insert here, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but you can see here it is a limited edition. They do make the tuna that is a non-limited edition. Not quite as good as steel. Uh, a lot less expensive, obviously. But I really like this foam, you know, uh, insert here to, for packing, shipping, etc. Um, but anyway, let's put that aside. Let's do some quick comparisons. Let's compare it to uh, the Ontario Rat 2 to give you an idea of size. There you go. It's a little bit longer in the handle. Uh, it's actually a 3.27 inch blade, but man, doesn't that look big for just a little over a three inch blade? I'll talk about that a little bit more. Super nice. Uh, put the rat up there. And then let's look at it against the Benchmade. Uh, pretty close to the Benchmade. It's still a bit longer in the handle, uh, but you can see it's a stone wash blade. And so is this Benchmade. So just to give you an idea. Uh, this one I acid etched, so that's why it looks like that. All right, so let's put these aside and let's talk about this knife. Um, all in all, I really like it. There are all always, excuse me, always things about a knife that I wish would be improved. And in fact, I just bought a really high-end knife that I actually had to send back, and I'll I'll t I'll talk about it relative to this knife and things that I like about this knife compared to that really high-end knife that I had. So. Let's start with the handle. So they're titanium handles. Uh, the thing that I really like about this Cricut that they, I think they've done well, and I wish they'd do it on all their models, is that uh, the clip here, which can be tip up left or right, um, is not sharp. And I'm really getting kind of upset with knife makers now where the edges are, are sharp. Uh, and I'll explain some places as I go around this knife that, that I find that are very sharp. And I just think that's just uh, unacceptable when you buy a knife, uh, especially in high-end knives. Uh, but this one is not sharp, much like the Cricut uh, Pilar. It has, all these edges are sharp and it just makes it, you know, annoying. Anyway, this one is not. Uh, nice inset screws. Uh, it, has, it is titanium, pretty good quality titanium scales. Uh, it's fairly weighty actually, which is kind of nice. But it has these G10 inserts for a little bit more grippiness. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, not too aggressive, inset screws. I love, uh, instead of using glue, um, like uh, the Chris Reeves knives do, they kind of glue these down. I, I really like um, inserts on, on scales to be like screwed in, it's my opinion. Um, beautiful collar here, little pop of green, little pop of green in the um, lanyard. The lanyard hole isn't that big, but I think you could get like a three mil through there, no problem. Uh, in fact, on this knife, I would recommend it, uh, which I normally don't, and I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, let's look at the other side, uh, the lock side. 
Uh, they've done a lot of really good things on this knife, in my opinion. So it is a frame lock. They have a uh, over travel and uh, an insert as, as well against the blade. So the titanium isn't uh, bumping against the, the blade, which I think is just a great idea, especially uh, right in the inside. I, I like over travels to be on the inside. I think it's cleaner um, rather than um, on the outside, you know, that kind of takes away some from, from some of the aesthetics, if you will. Uh, the handle, uh, well, let's talk about the pocket clip. It is a pretty short pocket clip. It lands really well, even though it seems like it would catch here in the pocket. Uh, I'll show you in the pocket in a minute. Uh, it does not. It has inset screws uh, and uh, props to Cricut. They usually put the brand on the clip, which I don't like at all. I like a low profile clip. This is fairly, uh, fairly deep, um, you know, aside from the lanyard uh, here. Uh, but it's fairly deep, it's inset, it goes in and out of the pocket like a breeze. I really like that. It doesn't hang up on this. Uh, that's really nice. Um, really nice pass-through. Um, no real milling in here. So this is fairly weighty. It's close to like a four-ounce knife. It's 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 fairly weighty. Um, in fact, uh, let's, let's go ahead and look at it in the pocket while we're talking about that real quick, and then we'll get to the blade, and then... Uh, we'll talk about a couple other things here. So let's put these in the jeans because, you know, I'm kind of a low profile guy. I like to see it in the pocket. Um, this is going to have a little pop, so it's not going to be like super low profile. Um, but pretty cool looking though, huh? I mean, that's pretty sharp. I like it. Uh, it rides really well right along the seam here. Um, you know, it's a thumb stud, so there's no pocket peckers or anything like that. So um, carries really well. Okay, let's talk about the blade. Uh, you can uh, obviously slow roll it, which is nice. Um, you can flick it pretty well, actually. Um, one of the things that I really like and that I'm getting annoyed with uh, even high-end knife makers is the lock relief here. It is up a little bit. You do have to kind of get your th thumbnail in here a little bit. I need to, this being uh, stuck in the house with the pandemic, I need to clip my fingernails. Sorry about that. Uh, but I like that there's not aggressive jimping on here. You can see there's some nice chamfering. There's no sharp edges anywhere on this knife. And that's just a real pleasure. I actually had to send a knife back recently because it was just cutting through my, in fact, you can look at my thumb. It's, it's all chewed up uh, from this uh, lock relief, as well as I had some aggressive jimping back here. Uh, but anyway, I digress. So uh, the blade is uh, S, oh, here, actually, I'll show you on this side here. It is, hopefully you can see that, it is CPM S35VN, so the same uh, blade steel. I don't know what the hardness is on this. I could look it up. Uh, I'll leave a link to this. Uh, the same blade steel that you would get on a really high-end Chris Reeves knife, so really beautiful. They did a great job on the edge here. Hopefully you can see that against, look at that edge. It's beautiful. Little drop point, nice swedge here. I really like this. It's not an aggressive swedge, so it's not it's not sharp at all. Uh, but you can use this, you know, to against it like a flint or something like that. Um, it is the tuna. Uh, it is a uh, burnt Burnley design. Uh, and what else to show you on here? Uh, really nice thumb studs, dual thumb studs, which I really like. I wish every manufacturer did this uh, so that you can uh, open it left and right handed. Uh, decent jimping here, not much. It's really kind of recessed here, so it doesn't give you much. In fact, I'll, I'll talk about uh, the th couple things that I, with every knife, there's always a couple things I uh, would like them to improve, and I'll, I'll talk about that on this one as well. Uh, Cricut, you know, they always put their name on everything. It's not, you know, too too in your face on, on, on the blade side, so that's totally fine. They didn't put the branding everywhere else, so I really like that. Uh, this is 63 of 250. Uh, if I can hit a thousand subscribers, and uh, I will do a short video where I'll do the giveaway, but please tell your friends, if I can get a thousand subscribers, I'll give this away on Christmas uh, Day, and this will make a great present for, for anyone. It's a, a really beautiful knife. Okay, so in the hand, uh, I have medium-sized glove hands, uh, plenty of room in the back. It rides really well. No hot spots from the clip at all. Um, it, it feels really good in hand. In fact, it's designed uh, like a bluefin tuna, and you can kind of see like it's, it's it kind of, it narrows here, but not too much. 
and it's, uh, sorry, I'm getting my hands all over the place, but it's it's designed to kind of drive forward, and it really does, It kind of because it kind of widens out here uh, towards the blade, and you tend to continue to move up on the knife, which is nice. It's, you know, they say it's a great box cutter, um, but I wish they would have put some jimping here because of that, because your, your thumb naturally wants to be here. Uh, the only thing that I would kind of complain about that, that bothers me about this is that um, there's there's no like space for your finger here or if I had like a flipper tab where I feel like it, it rides forward so much that my finger might slip. I don't think it will uh, slip. I've done, a you know, I haven't done really much cutting with this because I want to give it away. Um, but you know, you're, it does, it does arch here. So you're, you're not going to go up that far forward. Uh, it has a nice little sharpening choil. I'm not, I'm not big on finger choils. I'd rather have more blade and I don't, I don't like to put my finger in a finger choil here, mostly because you can see I've got a big scar. I cut my, cut my finger pretty, pretty bad when I used to be a cook and I uh, managed a kitchen. Anyway, um, nice, beautiful blade, uh, very thin behind the edge. Hopefully you can see that, quite thin behind the edge, a uh, fairly flat uh, grind to it, you know, kind of um, widens out up, up towards the end, but I think that hold an edge really well. Really good steel, uh, nice, um, um, nice stone wash here, so it's not gonna pick up too much light. I mean, it's obviously gonna pick up the light with the camera here. Uh, so, um, what else? I would probably use a lanyard and, uh, around the wrist if I was going to do a lot of cutting with it, just so I wouldn't slide up, uh, because I do feel like you, you tend to want to slide up. Be really good though for draw cuts, excellent for draw cuts. Maybe, uh, reverse grip would be really good. Um, but really good all, all in all, uh, excellent job. Uh, the only thing I, I mentioned that maybe a little bit more of an arc in here, something for your finger, I think would be good. Then uh, a little jimping here would be nice. Aside from that, I think they just did a really, really fine job with it. Uh, I haven't really tuned it or taken it apart or anything. And yet it's uh, very, very flickable. I mean, you can see very pretty drop shutty here. You know, flings out pretty well. Uh, not, you know, completely drop shut, but that's totally fine. I mean... That's that's really good, uh, good, uh, good tension. It's not going to come open the pocket at all. Uh, beautiful limited edition. Really, again, thanks, Peter. Uh, I will uh, do another video and uh, give you instructions with the comments in that video uh, for the drawing, like I did uh, last giveaway that I that I did. Uh, stay tuned for some really cool knives I'm going to be reviewing soon. And uh, again, if you want to support me, find me on Instagram, uh, DM me, PM me, uh, leave me a comment. Uh, I could really use the help. It's, it's pretty hard running a channel. So help me get to 1,000 subscribers, please. That's a big milestone before the end of the year. And here's one more look at the limited edition. Uh, quick look around and hope everybody stays well um, in these challenging times. And uh, really appreciate Nice uh, blade stock here, by the way. Uh, just a really, really beautiful knife. Really appreciate it, Peter. And sorry it took me so long to do this review. Uh, again, thanks again, Peter. And please like, subscribe, tell your friends, and stay well, everybody, and stay safe. And don't forget to vote. No matter who you vote for, just vote, please. Uh, take care. Mahalo.